I always equate it to when somebody doesn't know what to do, they always call the fire department, even PD. I mean, you know, hey, we don't, we can't get into this house. Well, we can, you know, so I, I just, like I said, it, it, I think every day we're gonna be doing something different and it, it's versatile, it's always, uh, it's always changing, nothing's the same. The same call, we go on the same call every day, chest pain, chest pain, chest pain, they're all different. You know, they'll all present different, they'll all be different. So, and that, that keeps me interested in it, and that keeps me uh, wanting to better myself for it. Located in the Central Valley of California. 48 Hours with Fresno Fire. Established in 1877. Fresno Fire Department is one of the oldest departments in the United States, rich in history and tradition. We continue with the second 24 at Station 3 and Engine 3's A shift. It's Easter Sunday morning, and firefighter engineer Chris Garcia's family has come to the station to spend some time with their father. They gather in the weight room. Um, you know, I, I do what I do to provide for my family, to be quite honest with you. Um, we, we have a good schedule, we have good benefits, and uh, no matter what, people are always going to need us, people are always going to burn their houses down, we're always going to help them. In the kitchen, the crew prepares a late breakfast while Captain Palmer sits at the computer completing his report from the previous night's calls. A call comes in. It's a medical call. En route, more information comes in. It's a gang-related shooting. The police lead them safely in. The scene has been as secured as possible, and the crowd is building. The engine company slowly enters what looks like to be a chaotic scene. They get out of the engine. People are everywhere, and the crew needs to keep their eyes open to keep themselves safe. Watch stuff around here, because people get crazy. Firefighter Mitchell is what they call a traveler. During his 48-hour shift, he moves from station to station, covering another firefighter for an hour or for a day. I responded to a call uh, in Engine 3's first in district for a shooting. Um, when we arrived on scene, we had learned that it had been a police pursuit of a gang member that had been wanted in a shooting a few days prior. And when we got there, uh, we found the, the shooter down in the alley with a bullet in his head and a bullet in his shoulder. It was a pretty intense scene. There was a lot of people out. The first responders removed their patient's clothing to make sure all wounds have been found and dressed. We have city wide, we need to close this whole place off. Uh, 
They move the backboard into position. The gurney is rolled into position. They slowly roll the patient on his side, place the backboard underneath, and secure the patient to the backboard as they continue to package up the patient for transport. The patient is lifted and secured to the gurney. They quickly move him to the ambulance for transport. Uh, once we got the victim onto the gurney, load him in the ambulance, um, it was still really a chaotic scene. You can see out the back and see police officers on scene trying to secure an area around us all with their guns out. Um, I remember just looking at him and at the victim and him with a you know, hole in his head. And he was still alive breathing but he couldn't talk to me. Two of the firefighters from the engine company stay with the patient for the ride to the hospital. And uh, it was the first time in my 10 years that I've ever had a police escort all the way to the hospital because it was such an intense scene and the, there was a threat of, of gang retaliation against the police department because it was a police uh, officer involved shooting. So that ambulance ride was, was, was pretty tense. We got quarter locks because down here in Fresno these carts tend to take a walk down into the homeless camps. So you gotta put a quarter in to get your cart and then when you lock it back up, you get the quarter back, you can play Gallagher or something. This is a very busy engine company and the crew goes to the grocery store shopping whenever they have a moment. Okay, it's all fancy. Guys, we'll save six cents a pack if we don't put the eat. While shopping, <laughs> they run into the crew from truck four. Just as they get to the register, a call comes in. It's a medical call. They have to leave their food and go. They arrive on scene to find a motorcycle rider down. The man is laid out on the asphalt. It's presumed that he has fallen off his bike. The police have secured the scene. It is unknown whether or not he has broken any bones. The crew continues to check out their patient. The patient is complaining of pain in his hips and legs. American Ambulance arrives on scene. They bring out the gurney and their gear. They place the backboard under their patient in preparation to secure him and package him up for transport. He is loaded into the ambulance and will be transported to the hospital. He's, he's alert and uh, oriented. They're complaining of uh, hip and leg pain. So we took C-spine precautions and they're going to take him down to the hospital and get him x -rayed. Evening. Firefighter Keola Park sits at the kitchen table checking out some gear on the internet. He just returned from working for a half day as a captain. He is studying for his captain's test. My name is Keola Park and I'm a firefighter for the city of Fresno. Currently I'm assigned to engine 3A and I've been a firefighter for a little over six years now. I became a firefighter because I always had a passion to help people. Um, I grew up in Hawaii where I had relatives who were in the fire service. I had an uncle and two cousins who are currently still in the fire service and they got me interested into wanting to become a firefighter, but my main goal and passion was always wanting to help people.
commercial fire for engine 9, 3, Belmont Avenue, and Wilson Avenue. Repeating commercial fire for engine 9, 3, 5, 1, 7, truck 4, 19, battalion 2, zone 5, 1, 5, 6, 1, Belmont and Wilson. Repeating moves. Probably our view is going to be in the, possibly in the old antique shop. Broken flame scene. Later in the night, a call comes in. It sounds like a report of a commercial fire. That day, I took the part of the day off, so I came in later in the day. And that night, I'd say about midnight, we got the call for a commercial fire. They arrive on scene and find smoke bellowing up from the east side of the closed up building. The engine company starts pulling hose lines. Pulled up on scene, jumped out, Matt pulled the line. I kind of assessed how we're going to get into the structure. Cam Palmer did his 360. We're going to the back. Smoke pours out of the building from all sides. We arrived and just saw a massive amount of smoke showing from the front of the, uh, of the business. Uh, once that parking brake set, I immediately jumped out and extended a uh, inch and three quarter line down the what would be the B side of the building, and it was uh, it was difficult to gain access into this structure because what presented on the front on the A side of the building um, was a lot different around the back. Truck four arrives on scene. Engine 3, please arrive at a single-story commercial building with smoke showing. This will be a working fire. Engine 3 will be Belmont Command. Engine 3, copy. First in truck, I want you to assess ventilation. Engine 3 has our own hydrant. Engine 3, copy. Yeah, once I stretched the line to uh, that B side, we found a door. Me and Firefighter Park, um, we were able to force entry into this building and we were met with just a, a wall of fire. Immediately came out of that, that doorway, it kind of just kind of blew out over our heads and uh, yeah, we started putting water on it from, from there. But it was, uh, we were met with a lot of heat, a lot of smoke and uh, immediate fire once we opened that door. Once we started putting water on the fire, through that doorway, it started to darken down a little bit, but because of the layout of the building, we weren't able to reach, you know, back to other parts of the building where it was on fire. But in that immediate area, I think that uh, we had a pretty good, pretty good knockdown on it from there. One of the firefighters from truck 19 ladders the roof. They cut through the tar roof and smoke, followed by fire, bellows out. Truck 19's crew continues to open up access to the building as the engine companies continue to plummet water on the fire. Truck 19 has removed the saws to cut through the metal bars. One of the crew members from Engine 9 continues to douse the flames.
The engine company is hitting the ceiling of the structure as fire consumes all the flammables in what was an antique store. Can you check and see if they have a response for it? You may need to see uh, the overhaul in the later stages of any uh, dozers. Captain from Engine 7 and his crew continue to go through the debris in the rear of the structure. The engine company in both the rear and front of the structure continue to plummet the smoking materials with more water. The fire is out and the haul out begins. This place was packed full and stuffed to the ceiling with old stuff and maybe some antiques but the contents are a total loss. The truckers on the roof continue to look for any embers. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Engine 3's Captain Palmer goes over what has just transpired at this incident with his crew. The crews pack their gear and roll hose. We were dispatched to a commercial structure fire in downtown. Engine 3 arrived first and we found a single story boarded up structure uh, with heavy smoke showing. Uh, crews got here pretty quick. Uh, we had a lot of doors and windows to open up and we found a well-stocked antique store uh, with fire in the back. Fire eventually spread into a small void attic space. So it took a while to chase the fire down. We did have one firefighter injury, um, hurt a rib, but nothing serious. And it looks like it was a uh, fire still under investigation, but it looks like there was forced entry by somebody, by somebody other than the owner. Uh, it looks like it's probably going to be an arson fire. For the crew of Engine 3's Asia, this 48 is concluded.